by heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Full-Time Fantasy Show. FullTimeFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Full-Time Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, let's take a look at some uh, things that went on in week one. We still have a couple of games. So uh, the Saints and Texans tonight and the Raiders and Broncos. So if you need the game, I hope you get it. Okay, I hope you get the win if you need it. Okay, let's start with San Francisco and Tampa. Man, Tampa's bad. Tampa's bad. Now, I, I like San Francisco's play calling. Jimmy Garoppolo did not look good, but San Francisco's defense looked great. But I don't want to say they looked great as much as Jameis Winston stinks. Jameis Winston stinks. I've been saying it for years. I have. I've been saying it for years. He's just not a good quarterback. And I think Bruce Arians needed to figure this out. Let me be the first one to share with you, Bruce. He sucks. I mean, Chris Godwin... 3 for 53, Mike Evans, 2 for 28, O.J. Howard, 4 for 32. It's the freaking 49ers. Come on. Ridiculous. It's got to be better than that. You're never going to win in the NFL if you lose to the 49ers at home by 14. Dolphins in Tampa, Florida looks pretty ugly this year. Better root for University of Florida. Go Gators. For the 49ers, Tevin Coleman injured. I did not touch him in any draft. I feel badly that he's injured, but I touched him in no draft. Matt Breider and Raheem Mostert were moving forward. George Kittle had a couple of touchdowns called back. I know he was only 8 for 54, but get excited. Get excited. All right, let's take a look. Washington at Philadelphia. Wow. You know I love the revenge narrative play. Did you have Deshaun Jackson? 8 for 154 and two touchdowns. Winston Jackson probably made somebody rich. Darren Sproles, I thought, looked good. Miles Sanders looked very good. He's going to be sensational. But Darren Sproles looks sprightly, to his credit. Zach Ertz, uh, not so great. Right, not so great. And JC, JJ, or Diego Whiteside, if you cut, dra- drafted him, remember, he's late. Not that good. For Washington, I really do like Terry McLaurin. He's a very good pickup this week. He's their speed threat. Trey Quinn, Paul Richardson, they don't have much speed, but Terry McLaurin does. He's the guy. And remember, Dwayne Haskins played with him, so it's only going to get better. That's only going to get better. All right, Dallas and Giants, speaking of better, how much better does Dak Prescott look? How much better are the Cowboys with Kellen Moore calling plays? And how much better is Michael Gallup? Oh, my God. These guys, Gallup and Cooper, look tremendous. Zeke didn't even do anything yet. Just wait. Prescott, 400 yards. Now, I know that this happened against the Giants. And what do we know about the Giants? They stink. Eli Manning actually put up good fantasy numbers. 306 and a touchdown, but were they ever really in the game? I mean, you have Saquon Barkley, 11 carries for 120 yards. Four receptions. And you just wish the guy could touch the ball on every play. But Evan Ingram looks good. He always plays well against the Cowboys. He always plays well against the Cowboys. Great job for him. But Michael Gallup, special. Amari Cooper, really good. Cowboys, I think they're going to go far. I really do. I think they're going to go far. All right, Carolina against the Rams. The Rams win a tough road game. Uh, Carolina came back in the fourth quarter, but I didn't think Cam Newton played very well at all. I have never, and you know me, anybody who follows me knows how much I hate Cam Newton. He's just not a very good quarterback. Now you've got... Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey, Greg Olson. I I don't know if they're better skilled players in the NFL. Those guys are great. But Cam Newton's not. you got to beat the Rams. you got to beat the Rams. Now, I know their defense is not that good, but you got to beat the Rams. Jared Goff was pedestrian. 23 for 39 for 186 yards and a touchdown. Come on. Todd Gurley split carries with Malcolm Brown, and Malcolm Brown got the touchdowns, by the way. Woods, Cup, 
I mean, these guys, these guys were okay, but they weren't special. They did what they had to do. It was a really good win. Those are the wins that you go, good win. All right, the Titans against the Cleveland Browns. Man, Baker Mayfield, horrendous. Horrendous. Now, I can give you something about Greg Robinson leaving the game, the bad offensive line, but he just didn't play well. But look, if you own Baker Mayfield, I say the following to you. You got to be steady with him. This is as bad as it gets, and he was still 285 yards and a touchdown. Okay, it will. There will be better days than this. Tennessee is a stingy defense. Tennessee is a hard team to play. Beckham was good. Landry was good. We need more Nick Chubb. We need more Nick Chubb. I think we need more. I want Nick Chubb to get 20 carries a week, but they couldn't because they were so far behind. For Tennessee, Mariota didn't suck. Derrick Henry, fantastic. And A.J. Brown, admittedly, I did not see this coming. I knew Delaney Walker was going to be good. I did. I really like Delaney Walker. And there's no Corey Davis. And I said to myself in DFS this week, everybody was on Hunter Henry. I like Delaney Walker. And I was silly. I didn't play him. It was my mistake. I won't make that mistake again. Because Denzel Ward was covering Corey Davis. But A.J. Brown looked good. It looked good. And Derrick Henry is a star. Good thing I have him everywhere. All right, Kansas City against Jacksonville. Patrick Mahomes, 378 yards and three touchdowns. This is with Tyreek Hill leaving the game with an injury. Sammy Watkins, Roto, out of his mind. Travis Kelsey, great. Damian Williams, great. LaShawn McCoy had a lot of running room. All right, so they played very well. Jacksonville. Nick Foles out with an injury, but I thought Gardner Minshew didn't do a bad job. 22 for 25 for 275 and two touchdowns. What more can I do for you? Leonard Fournette was pretty darn good, but DJ Chark played great. And Chris Conley, I gave you that nugget, didn't I? Six for 97 and a touchdown. If you listen to the podcast, you had that nugget. Revenge narrative. D.D. Westbrook was shut down a little bit. I had that feeling. I did not like D.D. Westbrook. I didn't. I mean, I liked the player, but I, I didn't think it was... The right, the right week for him. I knew it was the right week for Lamar Jackson. I told you Lamar Jackson. Did I not? Did I not say he's from South Florida? Did I not tell you that he's going to want to play well? Lamar Jackson, 17 for 20, 324 yards, five touchdowns. He only ran for six yards. Because Miami is so bad, it is unwatchable. I feel badly for every single Dolphin fan this year to have to put up with this crap. Crap. Fitzpatrick, terrible. Rosen, terrible. Kenyon Drake, terrible. Devontae Parker, terrible. Preston Williams, why wasn't he in more? Just terrible. I mean, Baltimore played very well. Mark Ingram, Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, very well. But the question is, are they really this good? I don't think so. We have to watch it. But you know who is good? The Minnesota Vikings. Kirk Cousins threw the ball 10 times. It was 21-0 at halftime. He threw the ball 10 times for 98 yards. That's amazing. Dalvin Cook was tremendous. 21 for 111 and two touchdowns. And Stephon Diggs did nothing. He was a decoy, which I knew he would be. Atlanta, Matt Ryan had good numbers by the end, but that's because uh, Minnesota stopped playing. Austin Hooper, Ridley, I mean, they came alive at the end, but really, they were shut down all game long. Kudos to Minnesota. Kudos also to Sean McDermott. I love that guy. And if I was starting a team, he would be one of my coaches. He would be on my coaching staff. Because I have to respect a guy whose team was losing 16-0 and they come back to win 17-16. Please stop playing Frank Gore though. Please. Devin Singletary, so much better. So much better. John Brown looked good. Josh Allen was wretched in the first half, but he picked it up. For the Jets, I mean, I, I have to blame it on Adam Gase. You're winning 16 nothing. Finish them off. Jamison Crowder was special. Robbie Anderson, we knew he was going to do nothing. Quincy Nunwa had one reception for minus four yards. Seriously? Le'Veon Bell played great. You had Bell who played great and Crowder who played great. That's good enough to win. You've got to win these games. Seriously, you have to win these games. All right. Do you know why Melvin Gordon is not going to be back to the Chargers so fast. Because Austin Eckler is really good. And so is Justin Jackson. 
because the Chargers were not desperate for Melvin Gordon when Austin Eckler goes 12 for 58 in a touchdown and then had another six receptions for 96 yards and two touchdowns. Unreal. He played tremendous. Now I feel badly about Mike Williams. Gotta watch that. I'm not a Don Charlinman, Travis Benjamin fan, but I think this bodes well for Hunter Henry. I do. And of course, Keenan Allen. For Indianapolis, Devin Funches breaks his collarbone. But I think the shock of all shocks was Marlon Mack running for 174 yards and a touchdown. They fed him the ball early and often. T.Y. Hilton, that was pretty nice. 8 for 87 and 2 touchdowns. I'm sure a lot of people faded him. Seattle against Cincinnati. I don't even know how Seattle won this game. They did not play very well. Tyler Lockett, I know he had, touch, had a touchdown, but he dropped one that was right in his hands. Oh my God, that was terrible. Chris Carson was good. But Seattle, this is just an ugly game for them as usual. Defense was fair, not special, fair. I thought Cincinnati played well and could have won this game except for Joe Mixon getting injured. John Ross, 7 for 158 and two touchdowns. We've been waiting for this for John Ross for how many years? I mean, if he's going to be this good, when A.J. Green comes back, this offense could be interesting. I am cautiously optimistic about the Bengals right now. Don't be misconstru- don't misconstrue the, the tie game here with Arizona and Detroit. Kyle Murray's game was terrible. The first three quarters was shameful. Shameful. And then he came alive when the Detroit Lions started to play prevent defense. The Lions should have won this game. I don't know how Matt Patricia doesn't win this game. Carry on Johnson needs to get the ball more. He needs to get the ball more. Hawkinson looked great. Amendola looked great. Kenny Galladay needs to get the ball more. Four, four receptions? Come on, that's not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. I mean, Detroit needed to win this game. Kyler Murray also getting back to him. He didn't move out of the pocket at all. Maybe one time that I watched. Larry Fitzgerald played, played great. David Johnson played great. Where was Christian Kirk? Where was anybody else? All right, in the last game, New England against Pittsburgh. Let me ask you this question. If they played this game 100 times... Do you think Pittsburgh would win more than five times? Pittsburgh looked terrible. Ben Roethlisberger, terrible. James Conner, 10 for 21. Nobody played well. Juju Smith-Schuster hurt himself at the end of the game. Meanwhile, it looked like Brady could could score at will. At will. 340 yards, three touchdowns. Sonny Michel didn't play well. Philip Dorsett did. Julian Edelman did. Josh Gordon did. Unreal. All right, tonight's games. I like Denver to batter Oakland. I think Oakland's in big trouble tonight. And then Houston against the, the Saints. Uh, it's a tough matchup. I feel badly. I really do. Because I like the Texans. But you don't want to go have to play New Orleans week one on the road. But if the Texans can keep this game close, I think this will say a lot about where this team is and where this team's heading moving forward. So even if the Texans lose 27-24, 31-28, I'm okay with it as long as they keep it close. Because if they do, it'll bode, it'll bode well for the future. Getting back for Denver, Oakland, without Antonio Brown there. You got Tyrell Williams. I don't know about the passing game. Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. It's just a, it's a confused mess. And if Denver goes in on stopping Josh Jacobs, Carr could get killed. It's, it's just a mess. All right, but right now it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Remember, check everybody out at si.com backslash fantasy and also fulltimefantasy.com. Enter the promo code ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. This is Dr. Roto saying be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to Full Time Fantasy. There's never been a better time to join and go full time. Visit fulltimefantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time.